this redox reaction between dichromate ions and acidified zinc is a really important reaction. Not for titrations, it's actually not so useful for that, which I'll come on to later, but because the zinc cannot just reduce the chromium in Cr2072- once, but it can reduce it twice. Let's have a look at the half equations we'll be dealing with with this reaction, all right? We'll start with the zinc. So the half equation for the zinc is Zn2 plus plus two electrons, obviously in a reversible reaction with zinc. Now the E0 value of this is minus 0 0.76. Now underneath the first of our chromium one, Cr3 plus plus an electron, obviously in a reversible reaction with Cr2 plus this time, and that has an E0 value of minus 0 0.41. Now the last one, probably the most involved of all of them, uh, I'm gonna start with that reversible reaction sign just so I can try and line these up properly. But essentially what we've got is half Cr2 O7 2 minus plus seven H plus plus three electrons, and that gives us a Cr3 plus and three and a half H2O. Now it looks a bit weird, it's just the way it's written, okay? And that has an E0 value of plus 1.33. So I've listed these as I always do with the most negative on top so we can tell what's happening in terms of redox. Now, speaking of redox here, if we react zinc, acidified zinc, with our dichromate, of course, this is more negative. The zinc is going to get oxidized, losing electrons, the chromium in here is going to get reduced, all right? So from the Cr2072 minus to the Cr3 plus. So that's the first reaction here, zinc reacting with the dichromate, of course, oxidation and reduction using our anti-clockwise rule. So in that first reaction, if we go ahead and combine these two equations, now I'm gonna use three Zn for this because again, it's all about balancing equations. We've got two electrons and three electrons. I've tripled everything in the zinc and I've doubled everything in the dichromate. So we end up with three Zn, Cr2072 minus plus 14 H pluses. Electrons are canceled out. We end up with three Zn2 plus, two Cr3 plus and seven H2O. So you can see that that uh, chromium has been reduced and we need the hydrogen ions there in order for that reduction to happen. We do get quite a distinctive color change here as well. Orange solution of our dichromate to the green Cr3 plus. Now this is exactly what you see when you use the say potassium dichromate, acidified potassium dichromate to oxidize things in organic chemistry, orange to green. Okay, so there's nothing new to learn here. It's just that we're focusing on the reduction of the chromium here. So like I said, orange solution to green solution. And these 14 H pluses that you get after combining these two half equations, that's why the zinc needs to be acidified. Without it, you can't make the water. Now the zinc, because it's got a more negative E0 value than this one here, this Cr3 plus actually gets reduced even further to Cr2 plus. So we have another color change because the zinc not only reduces this one, but it reduces this one as well. So in the second reaction, the zinc takes the Cr3 plus that was produced in the first reaction and reduces that even further to Cr2 plus. So we're gonna get another color change here. This time the color change is from green to blue, but all of these are solutions, okay? So if you react potassium dichromate, acidified potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate with zinc in an acid conditions, then you're gonna get orange to green and then green to blue. It's gonna go through two color changes because zinc is able to reduce not only the Cr2072 minus, but the Cr3 plus as well, all the way down to Cr2 plus. As that zinc is able to reduce both the dichromate and the Cr3 plus, we do see two color changes, as I've just mentioned. Now, that is the reason that it's not useful in titrations, okay? Purely because, A, it's hard to see a distinctive color change, okay? Yeah, you know, has it all turned green? Or, hang on a minute, once it's all turned green, has all the orange gone? Now it's all of a sudden starting to turn blue. It, it, it's not great for a titration. We want a distinct color change for a titration. The other thing is, if you look at the stoichiometry of it all, you're dealing with two different equations, and it gets really, really messy it is doable but it's messy so we tend not to use this you know as a titration this one however iron 2 plus also reduces cr2072 minus and that is useful in a titration scenario fe2 plus 
is able to reduce the Cr2072 minus the dichromate to Cr3 plus. That's fine. But what's good here is that it doesn't reduce the Cr3 plus to Cr2 plus. It's not a strong enough reducing agent to do that. Okay, so that doesn't happen. So it only does reaction one, essentially. Okay, so it doesn't further reduce it to Cr2 plus. So we only see one color change. So that is actually quite useful for us in titrations. Okay, so we've got our classic kind of iron 2 plus and dichromate titration, and we see an orange to green color change in that. So our orange dichromate gets reduced to a green CR3+, and that's where it ends, okay? So that only happens once one color change and the iron is very useful. But the reaction here, the color changes in this reaction are important. And of course, the reason why zinc is able to do that because it's got a more negative E0 value, it's able to reduce both the CR2072- and the CR3+. Because iron 2+, its half equation is not more negative than this value here. It can't reduce it. So that's why we end up with just the one color change. So that's a really important redox reaction that's specified from the exam board.